what is good and what is evil what is light and what is dark what is water and what is steam um, when, when we look at light and dark what do we think is light and dark two separate entities you know is there something is there a thing called light that we can put over there over here and say that is light and a thing called dark and we can put it over there and that is dark and we can say we can lose the dark and keep the light or is light and dark the names the terms is that um, Like labels would be called them, you know, because we have like um, a, an abstract capacity to name things, to categorize, you know, things. And so we say we know what is light and we know what is dark, but we forget the relation between light and dark, right? That it's a process. I mean, if you think, say you are drawing a tree, you know, painting a tree, whatever, or photographing a tree, or, you know, just looking at it, um, in order to see the form of the tree, you've got to have light and dark. That's why on like a grey day, when the light is flat, it just can look flat. I mean, you can still see that it's... Um, like three dimensional looking but it's kind of a flat look which isn't as dramatic as when the light is, is more there's more contrast you know and if you think of a very very hot day um, you've got shadows that are very dramatic in the landscape even in a desert and stuff like that you know, you'll have like shadow and it's very very dramatic you? Uh, when it's very dark you have kind of um, points of light like photons you've seen that when it's really really black um, so it's kind of like there's always an element of one or the other you know one or the other you see there, there you go again it's so almost like you're saying oh there's light there in the dark or dark there in the light I mean in a way you can say that but you still when you say that and to not get caught up in there's two separate things rather it's kind of like a process that is intermingled and so likewise with life and death you know some people think right this is life what I'm doing now I am alive and at the end of being alive I will be dead and so you've done that again you know you, you, you've created this term life and then you created the term death and the two ain't meeting but have you ever seen the kind of um, cinematic effect when and I've actually seen this when I've had psychedelics um, so you move your arm like that and every step of your arm moving there's like um, an image of it you know so it's like um, all the little images of your hand moving your arm moving right? I've actually seen that um, when I was on psychedelics one time and the way I would describe that is that every motion you know, so every place your hand has been or your arm has been is the death of that motion. You know, that in order for your arm to move, there has to be a death. Right? A death of like a wake of death. That where your hand was there, that's past now. Your hand's here. So there it's, it's died from being there, yeah. <coughs> 
your body, your organism changes, like it renews itself. Right? So how you are now, like you know, the cells come off, the cells die, and the organs rejuvenate and things like that through life. That's also a death. There's also a death of your childhood, your babyhood, your childhood. All these these um, passages that you've been through, you know, and it could can be um, a love affair, right? a friendship, uh, some holiday, anything, some bad experience you had, you know. The, the, you've lived it and then it's died so life is in death and death is in life right? but isn't it weird how some people when they get caught up in the terms of things will think you can have life forever and that is Im immortality I will go on forever and ever and ever and ever and that's like saying you can have up Ever, I'm going to be up. I mentioned how, how stupid that would sound. I'm going to be up forever. Right? But where there's up, there's always going to be down. Because you wouldn't know you were up unless there was a down. Right? I, when, I, when I did psychedelic experience, and um, obviously there was no kind of support. You know, for for experiences, it was, like, it was like there was like a community going, but especially when you're young, you have such powerful experiences like that, it just shakes all your worldview, you know. And there was no support, and so, and and you know, I ended up living rough, and I had to come back to where I was living previous, you know, I'm very young, and so there was this searching, searching, you know, for answers and looking at books, and. The book that really, really got to me and it explained things was Alan Watts. It, you know, there's the first book I got um, where he explains things like this about polar relations and everything like that. So I just think it's very, very, very interesting to know.